the 2D platformer is a genre that revived the gaming industry back in 1985 when Super Mario jumped out of his green pipe. When Mario Maker was announced for the Wii U, it was supposed to be the definitive 2D platformer. It was going to be an experience where fans make levels for fans. Creativity is a necessity in Mario Maker. Anything you can imagine in a Mario level can finally come true. It's a great idea because if you want to spend hours upon hours creating levels, that's encouraged. If you're more like me and you want an endless supply of fan-made levels to download and play, the internet is your oyster. Although it had a major cult following, the retention of the casual fan was lost. The problem was, a solid 99% of these levels were just crap, and with the subpar rating system, it was almost impossible to find a decent level. Since you were only able to like a level and not dislike it, it was a lot more difficult for the algorithm to sift through only one variable. Bring in the Nintendo Switch, a potential juggernaut of a console, and Nintendo knew that they had to bring out a sequel. Mario Maker 2 sold over 2 million copies by June, and it has no signs of slowing down. The success of the Switch obviously has a direct correlation with Mario Maker 2's success, but the proper rating system that was implemented is where this game truly shines. You can not only like a level, but dislike a level as well, and that's what gives this algorithm so much more sophistication when it comes to deciding the top levels made by creators. With added browsing features like tags such as speedrun or puzzle levels, you can play just about any kind of level you can imagine. The game also tracks the percentage of users who complete a level, which factors into what difficulty ranking it would fall under. Yet another thing you can filter while browsing. It's pretty incredible to see what the community has created so far, and we're still so early into the release that I'm beyond excited to see what's in store for the future. What I love about this game is that it's endless and it properly filters out all the crap levels. If I don't play for a week or two and then turn it back on, I have a beautiful platter of brand new levels to play with all their user-friendly mechanics made by true fans. If you played the hell out of the OG Mario Maker, you'll be pleased to see some new mechanics added to the sequel, like a crane and a seesaw that accounts for the weight of not only yourself, but enemies as well. My two favorite additions were the cat power-up and being able to drive a car. Some of these racing levels felt like an entirely different game. Variety is a good thing. The creator aspect of Mario Maker 2 is something that I didn't spend too much time in, because I'm simply not a creative dude. I play video games to play video games. Still, I want to give a big shout out to all y'all creators out there, because without you, I wouldn't be playing this game right now. If you're new to the series, or just new to level design in general, there are user-friendly tutorials that teach you the necessities on how to make fun levels and stress the balance between what is challenging and what is fair. A good example of this is that you're not encouraged to have a blind platform not visible to the player that could potentially lead to a death. That would piss me off and make me want to skip the level. Instead, you want to make a platform that's visible in order to make sure that the player has a fighting chance to survive your creation. Traditional Mario levels are not the only thing to look forward to. With so much added customization, there are so many different types of genres, from puzzle solving to car racing to classic old school shooters to even Metroidvania levels where you backtrack after obtaining necessary items. It's amazing what the community can think of. This game could very well serve as an inspiration to many young lads out there and get them into level design. There's so much going on with the community, both in the game and on YouTube. This was an idea that Nintendo definitely had for a while. It's not a crazy idea to think of. We all imagined Mario Maker way before it was actually announced. You make your own levels, duh. But the way they actually incorporated every element, from the rating system to multiple graphics from all generations, Nintendo's love and care in its craft is incomparable to other companies. Story Mode has over 100 levels, and it covers all forms of level design. The levels are typically short, and there's a ranking system on how difficult the levels are. This serves almost like a dev tool because you're able to see so many different ideas and by nature, you'll feel encouraged to branch off of those ideas and incorporate them into your own levels. With all the genres and difficulties to choose from, I really can't name a scenario where any type of gamer wouldn't want to play this game. Even if you hate Mario, which I don't think is actually possible, this is a must own for any fans of video games, regardless of your affiliation. I have never felt such appreciation for a gaming community until I played this game. There are some creative geniuses out there, and every time I boot up this game, I learn something new about level design.